I always kind of get the numbers wrong. I don't know if it's just me being too excited to hear the sound of my own voice because there is something a bit perverse. There is something a bit weird. Like there's not a day that doesn't go by. Honestly, I swear on my life. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think I'm an absolute nutter for sitting here for 700 plus episodes, soon to be 1000, right? This year, I'm going to hit 1000 episodes of just me talking. On the random show, I have some guests online, you know, big up my guy Rodeo, and I probably have a few others, but on the Agostino Zinger show, it's just me talking into a microphone for a minimum of one hour for 700 plus episodes. That is absolutely unhinged. That is a form of mental illness. You know how they have that meme now? There's that meme that goes around the internet, right? There's that meme where they say, if you're a young lady or if you're a young man, whatever you like out there, right? And you walk into... And you walk into a um, and you walk into somebody's house for the first time, right? You're about to hook up. Um, you want to go back to their house and you want to do some 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 fun things, right? Some adult fun. There's a meme that goes around that says, if you walk into somebody's place and you see one of these, you should run. <laughs> People say this on, online. It's like a meme at the moment. If you walk into somebody's house and you see a focus right scarlet, right, which is basically an audio interface that most podcasters and live streamers like myself use to plug in your microphone and stuff. If you see one of these in somebody's apartment or home, you should run. It's a big red flag. And I have to be honest, as somebody that sits inside his home or his parents' basement covered in Cheeto dust, talking into a microphone for 700 plus episodes, I think I'm a walking red flag. I'm not going to lie. I actually do think I'm a walking red flag. Like, I really am a walking red flag. Like, a guy like myself, right? Having no, like, big social group, no real big amount of friends, consistently inside, permanently online, and recording 700 plus episodes of me talking to myself into a microphone, that legitimately is a form of mental illness. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with it. Because I think last year I discovered I got ADHD. I think live on a stream, I think random show. I think I was on one of my most turn up nights, right? Because I usually get accused whenever I'm doing a random show and I'm really rambling and I'm really turned up and I'm really talking at 100 miles per hour, no breaks, run on sentences f until run on sentences for run on sentences again and again and again. People often accuse me of being on meth. People often accuse me of being on drugs. People often accuse me of being on speed or being on coke or being on crack live on air, which I can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt, apart from maybe a DJ stream, I don't think I've ever ingested even alcohol on a stream. It's very, very rare that I do that. But I do like when people suggest it because it's fun and I do like to lean into it because why not? You know, it's good to be a little bit of a rock star. It's good for people to think that, you know, I'm doing edgy things on stream, which I'm obviously not, but maybe I am. Who knows? No point of clarifying. But usually when I'm turned up and I'm really ready to go, I'm rambling, I'm talking super passionately about stuff and it's just me. There's no one else here. Yes, there's you guys sometimes who are maybe watching live or maybe you're listening after the fact. I'm kind of picturing talking to you from across the table somewhere, but it's a bit of a one-way conversation. So I understand why there are some people out there, especially women, who look at a focus right Scarlet audio interface and they say if they see one of these at somebody's house on a desk somewhere that's a red flag and I understand why I really understand why because that's strange it's sort of equivalent to like imagine if you went to a guy's house right and they had one of these um what's that um green grass wall restaurant like do you know restaurants have this wall design that that's usually kind of like you know um mostly focus on like girls like it's to get girls to post stuff on instagram there'll be like a really trendy cool restaurant or cocktail bar and they'll have like a grass wall or something right where you can take pictures imagine if you walked into a guy's house and he has that inside his actual apartment imagine if he has like you know he has like a wall with like neat like a neon sign like that says like you know every day i try harder one step to the future my love is your love imagine if you walk into a guy's house and he had like a neon sign on his wall he has like a you know a grass wall he has one of these things um do you remember this i think most metropolitan cities have this um butterfly butterfly graffiti do you know what i'm talking about here wall these little things in tourist spots where girls take pictures in front of 
Imagine you walk into a guy's space and he has one of these on his wall. He has like a design of a butterfly on the wall where you can stand and take a picture and a selfie. That should be a red flag as well because that is obviously bait. That's like, that's like, um, that's fop bait. <laughs> <laughs> that is fop bait. That is absolute fop bait. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Um, big up NJ Ranger. No, Angel Wings. That's the one. Angel Wings Butterfly. That's the one. Angel Wings. That is fucking fop bait, right? Angel Wings graffiti on the wall is fucking fop bait. So I think the same thing can be said. Yeah, there we go. Big up NJ Ranger. There we go. That's the one. Imagine you go into a guy's flat and he's got this. You go into a guy's house, a guy's apartment, and he's got that. This and a focus, right? You should run. If you're a young lady, a young man out there and you're dating, if you see any of these things on somebody's wall, you should probably run. A neon sign, butterfly graffiti, angel wings, or a, or a grass wall, you should probably run and a focus right. And I think, unfortunately, these last few days, I have realized that I am a living, breathing fucking red flag. I am a red flag. I realize I'm a red flag. And you know what I've realized because I'm a red flag this year? I made a promise. Well, I've, one one of my resolutions that I'm kind of adding going on is this: I'm going to be somebody who doesn't let people down. I feel like last year I let down a lot of people. I let down a lot of people by just you know flaking on meetups and stuff, and just generally being very unreliable and kind of you know my usual closeted keeping myself to myself type of thing i've always been a bit of a lone wolf i've always been a bit of a lone actually you know what i won't say lone wolf i've always been a bit of a loner i've always been a bit of a weirdo so maybe content online has kind of been my natural place to kind of hide and be comfortable in because you know there's loads of other freaks and weirdos online too like you guys who are listening to me or watching me and stuff yeah you're all freaks and weirdos in your own way so maybe there's a bit of like you know there's a bit of a um, connection there right a rapport there because we understand each other but I think outside of that, in real life, you know, regular people probably see me and think, this guy's a fucking weirdo. Why doesn't he want to meet up? Why doesn't he want to go here? Why does he want to come for a drink? All these normal things that people do, I don't do. And for a long time, I used to always complain, or not complain, I used to be a bit annoyed when I would log into Instagram, especially my main account, and I'd see all my kind of old friends I used to hang out with when I was like, you know, what, between the ages of like 16 and 21. And they're all still friends now. They go they go for drinks. They go on holidays together. They go to festivals together. And I'm sitting there. Sometimes I'll be randomly, because, you know, Instagram is fucking a bitch like that, right? You don't open it for ages. And then you open it and it shows you a life update of somebody that you used to know. And it's like, fuck. You now you know all this information about them. And then um, I'll be sitting there to myself. And for a brief second, a thought will come into my head like, why didn't they invite me? Why didn't they ask me to come? But then immediately after, I'll be like, but you wouldn't go anyway you know so I completely understand and you know in life nobody waits for you no one's waiting around for you to accept an invitation life goes on people move on other people come along you can't expect everyone to just like put their life on pause for you you're not that special you're not that great nobody fucking cares so it makes complete sense why people just decide to move on and do their lives but I'm also I also can't take any pride or gratitude from that because it is kind of bad that I'm consistently the person that doesn't show up that doesn't follow through that doesn't keep their word um and just isn't there for people when they kind of need me or when they ask for it. because you know I don't ask people for anything I don't ask anybody for anything I'm definitely somebody that would rather die than ask somebody for help but if somebody does ask me for something I would like to think I'm the person that would drop everything for that person you know even though i don't like to ask people for nothing i feel like if somebody asked me i would do whatever it took to make that person happy or to follow through for them or to be there for them but i can't lie i haven't been that way recently i've been really crap you know i've been really shit and i feel like last year was one of my worst years last year i was super super selfish like incredibly selfish like ridiculously selfish to the point where like it was very toxic you know i don't need to explain myself i'm doing my own thing who are they to like ask me for an explanation you're not the boss of me blah 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 like i would see a request or i would see an invitation to go out as some sort of like as like as like as like an order you know just how messed up my brain was like hey do you want to hang out it's like i'm seeing that as somebody ordering me around or like basically um 
you know um cannibalizing my time and stuff and you know thinking my time is more precious than someone else's time right putting my time up on a pulpit and somebody else's time down in the gutter which obviously isn't the case so this year one of my one of my um, new year's resolutions apart from all the stuff that i've written on my twitter about reading loads of books about running about making sure that i'm nice and skinny to fit into my balenciaga and my rick owens one of my main goals i've got on there just in terms of a lifestyle f you know outlook on life is to just not let people down that's my main thing like if i say yes to something i'm just gonna let, not let somebody down regardless of what it is i think that's so important um especially the other day um went out for dinner the other day this is a really strange observation went out for dinner the other day and there was a person next next sitting on the next table right waiting for a friend clearly they, they got to a restaurant and they were at first i didn't realize that they were sitting at the bar first then they went to sit at the table and i lied i kid you not that person was sitting there combination of the bar and the table waiting for their friend for like 45 minutes and i remember sitting there just thinking to myself like it was making me angry that they were sitting there on their own waiting for their friend for 45 minutes but they seemed perfectly fine i was like what kind of friend would leave somebody just waiting for 45 minutes like how rude of you to you know disrespect somebody's time like that like you agree to meet at a certain time and here you are just leaving them to sit there and wait for you at a restaurant for 45 minutes and then i immediately realized i was like oh shit that's what i do when people ask me to come somewhere and go to a place right um and i don't show up or i don't follow through or i cancel last minute that's the same equivalent of doing that and i thought to myself i don't want to be that guy because i would never be that guy i would never just leave somebody waiting for me for 45 minutes maybe i won't come and i'll say i'm not going to come last minute but i'm not going to let you leave you just there at the dinner table like it looks so odd and then just before i was about to leave the person that they were meeting came and like, oh hey how are you hugs and stuff like everything is normal i was like nah i couldn't do that man i couldn't do it to somebody i couldn't lead them to just sit there and twiddle their thumbs i respect people's time too much like that